Hello and welcome to the Minimum Competence episode for Wednesday, July 26, 2023. I'm your host for today, Gina Leahy, a real estate and finance attorney from Philadelphia. In today's episode, we have the North Face facing off with the IRS on taxes owed on transfers to foreign subsidiaries. Meta fined $14 million for its data collection practices in Australia, and Elon Musk is taking his fight with the SEC over his tweets to the Supreme Court. Let's put something easy on our to-do list so we can cross it off and feel accomplished and dive into today's legal news. On this day in legal history, July 26th in 1990, President George H.W. Bush signed into law the Americans with Disabilities Act a comprehensive civil rights law that prohibits discrimination based on disability. It covers five main areas, including employment, public services, public accommodations, and commercial facilities and telecommunications. The act mandates that employers, public services, and businesses provide reasonable accommodations for people with disabilities, ensuring equal opportunities in all facets of society. It represents a significant advancement in guaranteeing the rights of individuals with disabilities, protecting them from exclusion, segregation, and unequal treatment. In employment, the ADA makes it unlawful for any employer to discriminate against qualified individuals with disabilities in job application procedures, hiring, advancement, compensation, training, and other terms, conditions, and privileges of employment. Public entities are required under the ADA to provide equal opportunity for individuals with disabilities to benefit from all of their programs, services, and activities. In addition, the ADA requires commercial businesses that provide public accommodations to remove barriers in existing buildings where it is easy to do so without much difficulty or expense given the business's resources. Finally, any violation of these requirements can lead to legal sanctions, compensations, and penalties. TBL Licensing LLC, owner of brands like the North Face and Wrangler, is appealing against a $505 million tax bill upheld by the U.S. Tax Court in 2022. The tax dispute stems from TBL licensing's transfers of its property, including intangible assets, to a foreign subsidiary as part of a Section 361 corporate reorganization. This process involves one company transferring all of its assets to another company in exchange for stock, which is then distributed to its shareholders. At the heart of the dispute is whether a lump sum tax should be applied immediately after the transfer of assets as argued by the IRS, or whether the income should be recognized and taxed annually, as contended by TBL licensing. The company argues that the tax court's interpretation of Section 367D would make every 361 exchange subject to the immediate gain recognition rule, thereby eliminating the role of the annual payments rule. TBL licensing also asserts that Congress favored annual payments to promote accuracy and avoid disputes over valuation. The IRS argues that all outbound reorganizations should be subject to the disposition payment rule, with exceptions carved out by the Treasury for instances where the annual payments rule could apply without risking tax avoidance. The case, which could impact many multinationals, is currently being heard by the U.S. Court of Appeals for the First Circuit. The Australian federal court has imposed a $14 million fine on Meta Platforms, Facebook's parent company, for undisclosed data collection using the now-defunct Anavo app. Between 2016 and 2017, Meta promoted Anavo as a virtual private network service for safeguarding personal information. VPNs function by providing a different online address to mask a user's identity. However, the court found that Meta leveraged Anavo to collect users' location data, usage patterns of other apps, and visited websites for its own advertising goals. The judge stated that this lack of sufficient disclosure could have prevented thousands of Australian consumers from making an informed decision about their data's usage prior to downloading and using the Anavo app. This ruling, including a 400000 Australian dollar fine in legal fees owed to the Australian Competition and Consumer Commission, forms part of Meta's ongoing legal issues regarding its handling of user data in Australia. 
Despite this, the company still faces another legal challenge related to its dealings with data analytics firm Cambridge Analytica. Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla and SpaceX and owner of Twitter or X or whatever he's calling it these days, plans to appeal to the U.S. Supreme Court a decision regarding a consent decree issued by the Securities and Exchange Commission. The consent decree was implemented following Musk's tweet in August of 2018, claiming that he had funding secured to take Tesla private, an action that the SEC claimed defrauded investors. This decree has been upheld by the Second U.S. Circuit of Appeals in Manhattan. Musk's legal team argues that the SEC overstepped its authority, alleging that the decree infringes upon Musk's free speech. The decree was part of a settlement in which Musk and Tesla each paid $20 million in fines, and Musk agreed to have some tweets pre-approved by a Tesla lawyer. Musk's legal team insists that the SEC had no right to impose an unconstitutional gag rule as part of the settlement. Thank you so much for listening to Minimum Competence, your daily news podcast for lawyers. If you're looking for more than Minimum Competence, links to further reading on all of the topics touched on today are in our show notes. If you have any questions or story suggestions, find us on Mastodon on the esq.social instance. I'm at Gina and my co-host Andrew is at Andrew. The views, thoughts, and opinions expressed in this podcast are those of the hosts and do not represent those of any organization we may be affiliated with. Nothing here should be construed as legal advice because it isn't. Reviews go a long way towards helping new listeners to find our show. If you have a moment and can leave a rating or review on your podcast player, we'd appreciate it. And if you know someone that might enjoy a story we cover, consider sending them the episode. Minimum Competence is available at minimumcomp.com and wherever you get your finely crafted podcasts. We'll see you back here tomorrow. And until then, remember, priorities are like arms. If you think you have more than a couple, you're either lying or mistaken. <laughs>